What's up everybody, welcome to the video, Chris Pinnell here, we're going my core plays for week 7 of the NFL season for DraftKings and FanDuel. We'll be going position by position, breaking down cash games, looking at stacks for tournaments. We'll try to build a lineup as a progression of this, more so for a single entry tournament build. And then at the end, I'll run my optimizer to see what players are jumping off the board as of right now. If that sounds good to you, do me a favor, leave a like down below so I can afford a new haircut, please. And subscribe to the channel if you're brand new, let's dive right into it. Alright, and as always, we're going to start with the quarterback position because this is the foundation of our lineup. And if we are talking cash games first... Jaden Daniels, Geno Smith are they really the only two options that I would kind of side with this weekend. It all just comes down to, do I have the money to afford Jaden Daniels? If not, well, I don't mind dropping down to Geno Smith. For Jaden Daniels, his floor has been extremely high this season. The ceiling is also great. And this is a great game environment at home versus the Carolina Panthers. 51 and a half point over under, which is the highest of the week. 31.5 implied team total, which is also the highest of the week. It is a nine point spread in Washington's favor. And if Deontay Johnson happens to miss this game, I do have a little bit of concern that Washington could kind of take control of this game and he's not going to have to do as much as he normally does. So that's the one concern there. But the four with the rushing upside is extremely high every single week. I don't really see any reason not to like Jaden Daniels. If you are spending down Geno Smith, also a 51 point over under game, this game is being played in the dome on the road in Atlanta. Three point spread here. Still a solid implied team total. It's a touchdown less than the Washington Commanders, but this game should be back and forth, and I like that. The high point total, I like everything about it. Good spot versus Atlanta. Geno's averaging nearly 300 passing yards per game this season. For me, those are the two cash quarterbacks. You can make a slight case for maybe Sam Darnold this week. I wouldn't have an issue with that, but personally for me, those are the two that I prefer. But cash games are pretty boring, so let's talk some stacks for tournaments here. I'm headed over to the stack sheet over on the NFL sheet. And if you guys ever do want access to all the numbers that I show you guys, I do have it all available in the link down in the description or the pinned comment for that. Projections, ownership, optimizer, cheat sheets, all the good stuff. It can be found down below. But let's start this by sort of by salary. And we have San Francisco first. And I don't think I put Brock Purdy in the quarterback thing like a minute ago, but I think he should have been there. I don't mind the 49ers in general. We did get news that Juan Jennings is going to be out in do the rookie wide receiver making his debut so i'm gonna assume he's gonna slide into that role we'll see how heavily involved he is but i would say that's a slight bump for guys like brandon Ayuk, george kittle and debo samuel it's hard for me to think that he's gonna make a huge impact in his first week coming back from getting shot but we will see what happens obviously shanahan is a wizard at making things happen in that offense tougher matchup here versus kc but this game does feature a 47 point over under and while it's lower than some of the other ones we're going to talk about it's still respectable with that one and a half point spread they're also playing at home so i'm fine with the stack in general detroit minnesota is going to be a great game to get exposure to 50 and a half point over under in this one one and a half point spread and we're in a dome over in minnesota really nothing not to like here i guess the only thing not to like is detroit's price tag it's a little bit tough to stack them up but it's not extremely difficult. The running backs are expensive. Amon Ross St. Brown's expensive. Sam Laporta's got some price tag. But Jared Goff's cheap enough to where you still have some flexibility with that. But you're definitely going to have to find a couple of value plays to make it work. Especially if you want to do a run back option. Because Justin Jefferson is extremely expensive. He can be a great play this week. And everyone's going to want to try to get to him. But price tag does come in to be a bit of a burden, I would say. Jordan Addison, not too bad of a price point. Aaron Jones, like... Overall, I like this entire game. It looks great. And as you can see, Detroit, one of the top stacks overall, but that's just because they're so beefy at running back compared to other guys where they have two RB1s. Most teams do not have that luxury. Now, if you're looking at the ownership, all these ex more expensive teams are really not going to pick up too much steam. Now, there's a couple players on each team that can probably pick up a little bit, but just overall average ownership, not looking like it's going to be the most popular teams in the world. If you're looking for the popular teams, you're looking for these teams to come up big head out of the way. They're going to be down here because they're cheap. They also have high point over unders and the projections on the players and their price points are just a little bit easier to get to. So that's where the chalk is going to be this week. So if you are spending up on these, some of these more expensive teams, it will keep you a little bit different. As weird as that sounds because they project so well. If we're looking on the Minnesota side things, I already mentioned them. They're a little bit cheaper than Detroit. So it's going to be a bit easier to get to them and the ownership obviously coming in a bit higher as well. But I mean, love this game in general, but I would start with the Minnesota side. Just in general, not talking ownership. Uh, Green Bay and Houston is going to be kind of a weird game. I don't think there's going to be a lot of ownership there. I'd say the most ownership probably comes from Jordan Love, which relative to the quarterback position, because I don't think Jordan Love's ownership in general is going to be extremely high. We'll see some players, you know, 25, 30% owned. Jordan Love is obviously not going to get close to that. But I don't think Jaden Reed, Tucker Craft, those kind of stacks are going to be out of hand by any means. In Houston, I'm projecting CJ Stroud to be extremely low on like 1-2%. 
And you can get Stefan Diggs, Tank Dell. They're looking pretty solid. So I don't mind stacks of this game because it's not going to be as popular. But I also don't like it as much as the other ones we're about to talk about. Los Angeles, I would have absolutely zero interest in stacking the Las Vegas Raiders. Los Angeles is kind of a, it's a weird spot. Like I like Kyron Williams quite a bit. I would not play Stafford personally, but I don't mind some of the wide receivers because it's just going to depend on what happens with Cooper Cup. If Cooper Cup is in, I don't personally feel like I want to do that. I mean, it beefs up the offense, but I feel like I kind of wait and see how Cooper Cup is used in his first week back. But if Cup happened to be out, Jordan Whittington would be, I think, an excellent option on this slate. And if you're looking for a run back option, no Jacoby Myers. Obviously, Devontae Adams is out of town. Trey Tucker is going to be forced into targets. I know he's not that great at football, but. You know, this game, they're seven-point dogs. I, they're going to throw the ball. And the Los Angeles Rams defense is obviously not amazing. And then we have one of the games of the week. Actually, the two games left we had to talk about on here. These are the games of the week. That's where the ownership is going to be going. We have Atlanta versus Seattle. Dome game, 51-point over-under, three-point spread, 27.5-point play team total for the Atlanta Falcons, 24-and-a-half for the Seattle Seahawks. And you can just load up this game, and I think I'd feel pretty good about it. If you look at the projections... Across the board, look very strong. Atlanta, we have Kirk Cousins, Bijan Robinson. Super easy to stack with Kirk because his pass catching options are not that expensive. And there's three guys you can go to, three and a half to four if you want to count Kyle Pitts. But Drake London, Mary McLeod, Darnell Mooney, who's been awesome this year. And then, like I just mentioned, Kyle Pitts. Very easy to stack them up. Beatable defense versus Seattle. And for Seattle, we also have pretty much the entire offense available to us. Geno Smith is cheap. JSN. DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, Noah Fan, if you want. And then we have the running back position with Kenneth Walker, who I think is an excellent play this week. So love everybody on both of these teams. And then Washington and Carolina, Jaden Daniels already talked about. He's going to be one of the most popular quarterbacks of the entire weekend. Terry McLaurin also picking up a lot of ownership, but looks great here versus Carolina. If you don't go with the passing attack, I really like a pivot to Brian Robinson. Is assuming he's good to go. I think he's a game time decision, at least questionable. For this game, if he happened to be out, obviously big boost for Austin Eckler. Great matchup on the ground versus Carolina Panthers. I think either of those guys can have a great game. And then Carolina is a bit of a question mark right now. They are extremely cheap and easy to get to. And being a nine-point dog on the road, they should be able to throw the ball quite a bit. Now, like I said, the issue is Deontay Johnson. If Deontay Johnson is good to go, he is pretty much my favorite wide receiver play on the entire slate. If he is not, that is a bump for guys like Xavier Leggett. You also have Jalen Coker. I believe that's who it is who's gotten a bump in recent weeks, and I think he's only $3,000, $3,300, something like that. I mean, if he's going to get six-plus targets, five-plus targets, and a positive game script and a great matchup versus that Washington secondary, it'd be kind of hard to overlook him. We could look at Sanders. Chuba Hubbard's one of my favorite running backs to use on the entire week because he's going to be using the passing game. Jonathan Brooks was not activated this week, so he's just going to get all the volume he can handle. I know the projections aren't as strong on the Panthers overall, but you have to factor in the price tag, so it does make sense value-wise. All right, heading over to our lineup here, we have to grab a quarterback, and as I always say, this is not for you guys to use in all of your contests or anything. It's just to look at, and you can see the process that I go through when trying to build a single entry type build. You can apply this to your own favorite plays, and if you're in similar contests, it should typically work for you. Now, it's obviously up to the players to perform, but the roster construction is the main purpose of this. So we only get a quarterback here, and we talked about several that I think are in some pretty good spots. But I love that Atlanta and Seattle game. I think a lot of people will end up going with Geno Smith. So let's make the slight pivot here, a little bit more expensive, but it's not a big deal. Two Kirk Cousins here at $6,300, and we'll move on to running back. And not a huge list for me this week, which is nice. I feel like the past couple of weeks, it's been really wide open, but I feel like my running back core is pretty tight this weekend. So if you are spending all the way up, Kyron Williams on either side is in an excellent spot. He's at home, seven-point favorite, high implied team total at 26 and a half. Good spot versus the Raiders, who are currently 28th versus running backs, which means they're allowing the fifth most points per game. He's been a touchdown scoring machine. He gets all the volume in this offense, averaging 22 opportunities per game. No reason not to like Kyron. The only issue is you got to spend a little bit of cash for him, which if I can get similar production at slightly cheaper price points, I usually try to do that at the running back position. So it's not like he's a lock by any means, but he's my highest projected running back of the week projection wise, not ownership wise. And dropping down to the 7K range, we have Kenneth Walker and Bijan Robinson, who are both excellent pivots. Off of Kyron Williams, you can save about $1,000. And honestly, the production potential, I would say, is very, very similar. 18.8 opportunities per game for Kenneth Walker so far, 17 and a half. Or Bijan Robinson finally had that monster performance last week versus the Carolina Panthers, which I said, if he does not do well versus the Panthers, time to sound the alarm bells. But fortunately enough, he did his job. A couple of touchdowns, around 100 total yards. It's a great game from Bijan. Both these guys project pretty similar. Decent spots overall. Love the Walker price point on Fandle at $7,500. Probably going to end up being the most 
owned running back on Fanthel. Maybe not. It'll be close. But either way, I would expect high ownership on both sides. We're going down to the 6K range. Well, I guess it's pretty much the remaining running backs. We have Aaron Jones, Chuba Hubbard, Brad Robinson, Tony Pollard, and Kareem Hunt. Aaron Jones is expected to be back this week. Just a high-scoring game here. He's heavily using this offense and the passing game, which does increase the floor, averaging over 30 receiving yards per game this year on a 15.5% target share. So that'd be a plus for Aaron Jones. With this being a back-and-forth game, should just get a couple of dump-offs. I like the price point there. Chuba Hubbard, he's been getting all the volume in this offense in the backfield, averaging nearly 20 opportunities per game. Now, his potential on the ground is going to be limited, I would say, by this nine-point spread. But if they can stay in it, I mean... Obviously, the floor is high for Chuba, and the ceiling can be high as well. Brad Robinson, tougher to get to on FanDuel, nearly $8,000. For $200 more, I can get Bijan Robinson. For $500 less, I can get Kenneth Walker. Just a bit of a tougher price point to eat over there, but he should be lower owned nonetheless. But on DraftKings at $64, if you are not playing Jaden Daniels, points are going to be scored in this game, and Brad Robinson, I would say, would be the one scoring touchdowns if it's not Jaden Daniels and company. If you happen to be out, obviously, you can just plug and play Austin Eckler here. Tony Pollard with no Ty J Spears. Just, I know it's a very ugly looking game for the Tennessee Titans. This game features a 41 point over under and a 16.5 implied team total, which I believe is the lowest on this slate. They're also nine and a half point dogs. Great matchup versus the Buffalo Bills. They get shredded by running backs every single week, allowing the second most points per game to the position. They have really no choice but to get Tony Pollard the ball here. So while it's not pretty, I don't mind the spot just because of the price point and no Spears. And Kareem Hunt, we should expect him to be the RB1 in this offense still. Very small sample size, but 20.5 carries per game, 22.5 opportunities. Clyde edwards alaire looks like he's going to be back this week, but Kareem Hunt should still operate as the RB1 as long as Isaiah Pacheco is out. All right, back to the build here. We need a couple of running backs. Like I mentioned, love Kyron Williams, but I think for this build, I want to save a little bit of money if I can. Kenneth Walker, about $1,000 cheaper. Let's just plug him in. I'm going to go with the Seattle and Atlanta game stack, so I don't have an issue. Plugging in Kenneth Walker, you don't always have to run back with the wide receiver. And then we'll probably have to save a little bit more money here. So Chuba Hubbard, it doesn't look like I'm going to, well, I obviously don't have Jaden Daniels, so I'm not going to be forcing in the passing attack here, but I still want exposure to this game. I'm only slightly concerned about this Brian Robinson injury. I'd like to get more clarity on the news because what if he plays limited? So a little bit up in the air right now. So let's just plug in Chuba on the other side here at 6,500 bucks. Get all the volume and we'll move on to the pass catchers. And pretty typical, but we always have a long list of wide receivers here, but try to simplify it for yourself. Life doesn't happen to be this difficult. DFS doesn't have to be difficult. I mean, it can be, but whenever you can make things easier for yourself, you do it. You stick with your stacking options if it applies to your quarterback. If you play Jaden Daniels, you could obviously play him naked, but I wouldn't mind playing Terry McLaurin with him. Or if I am playing Jared Goff by chance. Jared Goff is not going to catch a touchdown every single week. Most likely, if he's scoring points, Sam Laporte is having a good game. I'm going to all say Brown's having a good game. Jamison Williams, doesn't matter. Somebody is with him. It's not just going to be Jared Goff himself. So we try to correlate as best as possible. If we are playing Sam Darnold, Two clear-cut stacking options with Justin Jefferson and Jordan Addison. You can do Aaron Jones out of the backfield. Maybe TJ Hawkinson plays this week. Just try to make it easier on yourself. But if we are talking cash games, I would say if you have the money, and Justin Jefferson is certainly the top spend of the week. I think a lot of people will try to jam him. In, in lineups, Detroit's obviously not been a defense that's been very good versus the pass for the past couple of seasons now. And so far this year, they're currently 29th versus wide receivers. So if you are spending all the way up, Justin Jefferson makes a lot of sense. Malik Neighbors is going to be back this week. Beatable matchup versus Philly secondary. And when he's been on the field playing, near 40% target share this season. I know it's kind of tough to trust Daniel Jones. And I know we didn't talk about Daniel Jones because in the stacks, I just don't really have much interest in stacks with Daniel Jones. But value-wise, at quarterback, he's not the worst option in the world. And then Malik Neighbors, obviously, I like quite a bit. Uh, Drake London, Terry McLaurin, excellent cash game options in the mid-range. Like liked them both a lot last week and both did and I think we could probably see some of the performances once again this weekend. Other than that, if you were trying to save a little bit of cash, I do think Addison is somewhat cash playable, although it's not my first choice. Same with Darnell Mooney and Jerry Judy. Like if you're looking for value wide receivers, like they are okay. For me, the standout cheap wide receiver in cash is going to be Juju Smith Schuster here at $4,000. We saw him pretty much take on the Rasheed Rice role in that offense in the primetime game versus New Orleans Saints. And while we can't expect 100 plus yards, Every single week, I believe his prop lines are right around 50 some yards and he should get peppered with targets. I know he deal, he's dealing with a bit of a hamstring injury this week, but assuming he is fully good to go, $4,000 is too cheap on DraftKings if you're going to be Patrick Mahomes, number one wide receiver. It's not like Juju's like super explosive these days, but if he's going to be a safety valve over the middle guy, kind of like a Travis Kelsey, I mean, I'll take it at $4,000. I'm expecting higher ownership, but I mean, kind of hard not to eat it 
down there, especially in cash games. Jalen Coker, someone to look at if Deontay Johnson happens to miss. I forgot to mention Deontay. If Deontay is fully good to go, like we're not going to have any limitations. He is my favorite wide receiver on the slate in the mid-range for sure. I wouldn't have him above Terry McLaurin and Drake London because the game script is perfect for him as a nine-point dog in just a high over-under game. Like, and, and, and Andy Dolan's playing quarterback the whole game. Like, If Bryce Young came in, that could obviously ruin things. But I, I love Deontay in the spot. But I'm a little bit concerned about the injury. So really just try to narrow this down. Juju Smith-Schuster, Deontay Johnson, DK Metcalf, Terry McLaurin, neighbors, Justin Jefferson are probably your best cash game options overall in each price tier. All right, back to the bill. Let's get a couple of pass catchers with Kirk Cousins because if you're telling me Kirk Cousins is going off without his pass catchers helping him out, I don't know what to tell you. That's just not possible. So Kirk Cousins, we got to get a couple guys. And Drake London is going to be public enemy number one for us. Really good previous two weeks. I'm not a game log watcher, but... 19, 36 points, and the targets have been steady so far this year. So I'm pretty comfortable playing him here at nearly $7,000 versus Seattle. And we'll grab one of his other wide receivers. We have Raymond McLeod at $4,400, Darnell Mooney at 56. I really like what we've seen from Darnell Mooney. Now, I wish he had a bigger game last week, but he's still been heavily involved in this offense. And while we can't expect 16 targets, I still don't mind it at $5,600. So we'll go with that. And then we'll move on to tight end defense. And then we'll try to fill the rest of this out. And talking tight ends, never really a fun thing to do. And I think it's pretty spread out this week. I do think Grant Casaterra with no Dallas Goddard will end up getting some decent ownership this week. He's only 3200 bucks, And you take Goddard off the field. He pretty much played all the snaps last week, ran all the routes. No reason not to like it. Philly will use the tight end position. So I mean, yeah, that's probably your cash game tight end. If it's not your cash game tight end, you're probably spending up for Travis Kelsey. If Juju happened to miss, which I'm not expecting, but if he happened to, I mean, really be nowhere else to get the ball to besides Travis Kelsey. Uh, Brock Bowers, another guy that the team just kind of has to force him to football because there's not many options. You have Trey Tucker and DJ Turner, a couple of creative players, I think, after that, and then it's Brock Bowers. So, I mean, yeah, it's just going to have to force him the ball at some point. And they should be trailing here versus the Los Angeles Rams and 22.9% target share so far this year. Averaging only 70 receiving yards per game. Pretty good for a tight end. Other than that, you're just looking at tournament plays that would correlate well with your quarterback. Jadavian Sanders, I do want to mention Ian Thomas, he got activated last week and played 33% of the snaps. So we still saw Sanders around 70%. So I think he's still playable. And if Deontay Johnson happened to be out, that's just more targets to get redistributed around the offense. And then defense, I'm not going to really spend any time on this. I just try to find low totals or teams that get sacked a lot and like to turn the football over. Cleveland, low implied team total here. And Deshaun Watson's the quarterback. And I think that's pretty self-explanatory. He's getting sacked more than anybody in the league right now. Other than that, I don't think I'd be fully against the Giants defense. If you have to punt, the Rams defense should pick up ownership with their low implied team total against them. Only $3,000. Bengals, Bills, those are pretty much the defenses I would center around. All right, back to the build here. Let's finish this off. We have $4,300 left for four spots. We can plug in a cheap defense. Like I said, I like the Rams. I mean, I don't really care about your defenses. Just pick and choose at the end, whatever fits. But we'll just plug in the Rams for now. That leaves us around $5,000 left. We can probably get even more money out of this if we just get a cheaper tight end. Let's go with Grant Castaner here at $5,600. And that leaves us pretty flexible because there were several options in that range that I thought we could get to. Now we could either go upper mid-range and then like a scrub, or we can kind of just lay in the middle. We want to plug in Juju here at $4,000. That would leave us with $7,200 in the flex. And we can get some pretty good options here. Let me get the quarterbacks out. We have Joe Mixon. Yeah, not the worst player in the world for tournaments. Jaden Reed, I like a lot. Bijan Robinson, I'm already going with the passing attack stack here, so I don't think it makes a lot of sense. For that build, we can get Terry McLaurin down here. We have no commander's exposure, if you haven't noticed. And if we want to get some commander's exposure, they have a 31 and a half implied team total. That is, that is one way to do it. So I don't think that's a bad looking build. Again, this is not for you guys to steal. It's just... This is what fit as we talk through it. So we went with the Kirk Cousins stack. Here with Drake London, Darnell Mooney. We're in it back with Kenneth Walker for Seattle. So for this build, we can try to assume that Seattle is leading. They're using Kenneth Walker. And we're running back with the passing attack for Kirk Cousins. to hit the ball 40 times. We're all happy. We have Chuba Hubbard at running back. Uh, Juju Smith-Schuster because he's cheap and fit. Green Castletera with no dollars. Goddard. We have Terry McLaurin down there in the Rams defense. I don't think it's a bad looking single entry type build. And like I said in the beginning, just from the optimizer here to see who is popping up here. If we just do a quick 20 max build, we'll put a little bit of settings on here. Let's do 10% randomness. Plug that on. Flex and eligible. We'll take out the tight end team stacks. And let's do position stacks here. We're going to stack quarterback with either wide receiver or tight end. Maybe both. It surprise us. Don't really care. 
you want to specify the teams, we can. If you want to take mobile quarterbacks out of that, feel free to do so. But we're going to run a quick 20 lineups here. And let's see who's getting jammed in. So I'm seeing a lot of Grant Casatera here, which Casatera, I don't know how you say it. Grant. We'll call him Grant. Juju Smith-Schuster, Rams defense. Deontay, assuming Deontay Johnson's getting a full workload, that's what that projection would be. These are, they have some randomness mixed in as well. So I don't think these are the exact. I took out the ownership projections, but I am seeing a lot of Minnesota. i seeing a lot of Panthers here. But yeah, not really, not really surprised at who we're seeing. A lot of Sam Darnold. And like I said, I, I'd say Jaden Daniels and Joe Smith are probably the cash game quarterbacks, but you can make a case for Sam Darnold. I'd say there's probably three. There's probably the three cash game options. The teams here, Minnesota's getting jammed in the most, then Washington, Carolina. No surprise there. Philly is basically all the tight end, then Rams, KC's. Atlanta, Seattle, a little bit lower over there. I'm thinking probably because some of the pass catching options are a little bit more expensive. And since all these chalky or cheap plays are getting jammed in, it's not leaving enough room. So once you like filter things out and actually play with exposures, if you're actually building 20 max, 150, you'd be playing around with a lot more stuff than just doing a raw dog build here and click and generate, which I pretty much did. But yeah, as you can see, the games of the week are the ones just getting thrown in a lot. Minnesota, Detroit, Washington, Carolina, that's where the ownership is going to be. So if you want to be a little bit different, Atlanta, Seattle is also going to get a lot of ownership as well. But yeah, there's ways to get different. Uh, Green Bay versus Houston's got a decent total. A lot of good players in that game, not getting as much ownership. So just something to think about. With that being said, that's all I got for you guys this week. So I hope you enjoyed. And if you did, make sure you leave a like down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're brand new. If you guys have any other questions, comments, concerns, leave them down below. I'm more than happy to get back to you. But I wish you all the best. And I'll see you all next time.